everything you ever need to know is within you. The secrets of the universe are imprinted on the cells of your body. Dan Mailman. Welcome to Living at Your Finest Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Babs. I'm a triple board certified family, obesity, and lifestyle medicine physician, and I am the founder of Living at Your Finest Wellness, a holistic direct primary care practice. Did you know that 80% of lifestyle-related chronic diseases within our communities are preventable with poor diet being the primary culprit? Now, contrary to what we thought, that it was our unfortunate genes, the good news is that we can make changes together to improve our health and quality of life. So that's what this podcast is all about. The Living at Your Finest podcast is devoted to helping families to live at their finest well-being using a holistic approach with a healthy lifestyle to nourish and flourish as a whole, vibrant, and healthy champion. So join me and my guests as we share transformational and sustainable skill sets from our health and wellness journey to support you and your families in achieving ultimate well-being. Ready to leave at your finest? Well, let's get to it. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Living at Your Finest Health Champions, I am so glad that you're back for another episode of the Living at Your Finest podcast show. Thanks for showing up as always. I hope you and yours are all doing well. I am excited if you haven't noticed already. I have my lovely guest. She's a friend and she is gracing us with her expertise today, Coach Maria Angel Lova. <laughs> I love that you name. got it. <laughs> love her name. So she's going to be sharing her expertise on a topic called buddy and mind elevating your performance. I know we all need this. She's going to be discussing how our buddies can actually heal itself. You know, I say that quite a bit. So she's going to just share understanding where it is, we're expecting it. It's also going to emphasize the alignment and self-care awareness. So I'm truly, truly honored that Coach Maria is here on the podcast. But let me introduce her briefly. So in 2016, Maria left a successful 17 years finance career to pursue her passion for fitness. Today, Maria is on a mission to redefine aging through the Angel Lova Method, a holistic program promoting symbiotic relationship between a sound body and a serene mind, a setting that true success cannot be achieved without, with either of them being in disarray. And I totally can attest to that. So I'm so glad. So with warm welcome, Coach Maria, thank you for coming on the podcast show. Thank you so much for having me here, Dr. Dolapo. I'm truly privileged to be here with you and to, uh, to have this conversation. I know we're both passionate about these things, so I'm excited to dive in. Yes, yes, we are. And so I want to start off about just your journey, where it began. You know, you had this top job, and then you just put that on the side to, to just help women. And you're doing such a marvelous job, by the way. I love your post and just the energy that you exude around you. So Thank you. let's share a little bit about your background, where that all began. So I come from a family of academics. My parents are both PhDs, and they were very much about academia and great and doing well in school. And even though as a kid, I displayed, you know, decent athletic performance, I don't think they ever saw athletics as an area that's a potential career. So I went through school. I did really great with school. I was always on the honor roll, that's A plus and all that. And, you know, based on what I was taught, I was supposed to go to college, get uh, that degree, and then go into the corporate world, which is what I did. At the age of 12, I actually got into the fitness because kids started making fun of me for my growing butt. And uh, at age 16, I fell in love with the gym. The gym became like something that was an everyday escape. And at the age of 16, when we moved to the United States, I started teaching gym classes at the gym. And throughout my career, teaching classes at the gym was my hobby, my fun thing to do. 2012, I discovered Pilates. And 2016, I realized you know what, what would happen? It was really a very intuition driven decision. What would happen if I follow my passion and I go after what my heart's desire? So I literally left behind everything that I knew professionally. Uh, I have an undergraduate and graduate degrees in finance and I worked in finance for 17 plus years. And I said, let's start uh, and be an entrepreneur in the fitness world. So I called my company Rebellious because everybody told me that I'm crazy to live a successful corporate job. 
job to start from ground zero in a completely different area of life. And eight years later, here I am, and I absolutely love what I do. It is a game changer for people, and it's it's become such a purpose-driven journey that now I'm on a mission to make the rebellious movement a global movement because I truly believe that we have to change the mindset about well-being and about wellness and what that means. And I really think it starts with a mindset shift. We have to shift from being reactive to being proactive, from looking at self-care as a, something that we must do versus reacting and do it when we have to do it because we're starting to fall apart. And I think that we can age with vibrancy and feeling great um, instead of sedentary, unhappy, uh, kind of like giving up on life almost. It's it's sad. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that background. I had no idea about how it all began. I just knew that you had this, you know, background in finance, but I had no idea that that young age you were teaching, you know, fitness, you were passionate about it and rebellious. I mean, I love the name as well. And <laughs> I can't even imagine what your parents said and everybody around you, but I thank you for that boldness for just following after your heart. So I want to tap into that mindset shift because I truly agree with you that it all begins in the mind, you know, so share a little bit about what that looks like. So somebody's listening to you right now and they're like, okay, yeah, I'm always reactive. I don't know where to begin. Can you please share what that looks like, whether it's from your personal experience or from your clients, what, where do they begin and what do they do? I think the journey starts with awareness. Okay. And I think for anybody who is listening right now and who is perhaps saying, you know what, I don't have time for self-care. I don't know what self-care looks like. I don't like to go to the gym. I don't have time to cook well. I don't have time to sleep well, right? I hear you because I was that person. I was that person who was very driven to climb the corporate ladder. I was that person who was also a parent who was trying to find that supposedly existing balance between career and family life. I was constantly rushing. I was speedily running on that hamster wheel. I was exhausted. I didn't sleep much. I had nights without two, three hours of sleep was completely acceptable in my old lifestyle. And I had very high stress levels. I was very anxious. I had anxiety attacks and I just accepted that. I thought that was part of the norm. I thought that was part of being successful. And I'm here to tell you that is not the case. So we have to change the mindset around what, you know, being successful means. I mean, listen, we all want to, or many people want to have the bigger house, the nicer car, right? The material things. Many of us are conditioned to think that our self-worth is defined based on our title that we hold at work, right? And how many of us sacrifice doing something that we love because we're going to make more money, because it's going to give us more prestige, because of the way people are going to look at us. And we forget about the things which truly make us happy. And for me, fitness and movement was that happy place. And I'll tell you, when we talk with my mom, my mom said, for, not for one second did I imagine that you could do something in fitness as a career, just because of her upbringing and the way she grew up, right? For her, the way to live is through academics and studies and getting a normal job, you know? What, what is the definition of normal job? Who tells you what is a normal job? <laughs> I know. Right? So we forget to stay true to who we are and to ourselves. So I urge you, if you're feeling exhausted, if you're feeling tired, if your body is giving you that feedback, your body is giving you that feedback for a reason. Don't brush it to the side. Well, that's just how it is. You know, we have normalized being stressed. We have normalized feeling crappy. We have normalized feeling exhausted and fatigued and going through the motion and not being intentional in life. And it does not have to be that way. Way. And you can still be very successful and you can still age gracefully and with vitality and energy with that, without sacrificing your health. It doesn't have to be one or the other. Very true. Not one or the other. Oh, it's not like I always say, it's not an all or nothing, right? Mm -hmm. So no matter where it is. So I like that you said start with the awareness. So you have to know where you are. You have to take an inventory of where you are. You, you have to be in a place of readiness. You have to be in a place of silence, like you said, serene. Because if we yeah. are... And I find that I can never, you know, make sense of what I need to do or where I am if I'm rushing and rushing. It just doesn't work that way. So we, we really have to like go into a place of our own and be reflective and be aware of what's going on. And that way, when our buddies are giving us all these signs, it's it's a message. But if we're too yes. busy, we can't hear it, right? So I think I the first thing that you said is being aware. And the way you're aware, create that that time. I, you know, if you have to just secure that time 
mind do it and hear what your body is saying and then decide, determine from the mindset what's the next approach. So how would you, and, and I thank you for saying that, you said something about time to sleep well, that we don't have time to sleep well. I know I was guilty of that. There's no time to sleep well. Meanwhile, sleeping well is what gives, is, is being proactive, right? Instead of reactive. So let's say this person, you know, they're listening and they're like, okay, I've spent the time. I figured I need to you know, exercise, but I'm busy. I, I don't know. How do I get it done? You know, your, your expertise in your coaching program, how do you address people's different needs? Because I know I've heard that you personalize it to every individual. So right. what would you say to them? Where do they begin? They get it. They know they have to do it, but how do they proceed in getting that fitness and the mind and everything aligned? So the first thing that you have to do in anything, if you want to make any changes is to take action, right? So if you're just aware and you're sitting there blissfully aware every day, but there is no action, nothing will change. So you have to take action. So how do you take action? Let's say fitness or movement is not part of your daily uh, self-care routine. How do you start incorporating movement? <clears throat> do you know what I tell my clients, the ones who are busy and go, go, go? I would like for you to give me five minutes a day to move. That's it. Can you give me five minutes of your time? And I don't care what you do. I don't care if you dance in your bath. I don't care if you go and make circles in the cul de sac. I don't care if you sit in the living room and march in place. I don't care if you take the stairs up and down. I don't care what you do. But what I ask you is five minutes of your day, just five minutes. Can you start with that? Now, if you tell me that you don't have five minutes, right? We can go further, right? So do you have time to browse social media? Do you have time to sit in front of the TV and catch up on the news or your favorite show? So perhaps you can take five minutes from that time and redirect it. Because see, the other thing that I tell people is you say you want to be healthy. Health is a lifestyle, right? There is a lot of stuff and that's what you preach. That is what I love about what you do. That health starts with a lifestyle, with the basics of health, right? How you eat, how you sleep, how you hydrate, how you move. So you have to start with those basic things. If you don't have those basic things, you know, we're a society that wants the quick fix, the magic pill that's going to give me energy, make me lose weight, you know, help me sleep better, make my sex life better, whatever else is going on in your life, right? It doesn't work like that. You have to start with the basics and you have to, I tell people, so if you say that your well-being is important for you, let's look at your calendar and let's look at your bank statement mm -hmm. and let's see, does your calendar reflect? Is it in alignment with what you're saying? Because until we align what what we say, what we think, the way we feel and with our actions, guess what? We're misaligned. And then let's say at our spending. So if your spending is going toward things which are nurturing you, if you're saying that your well-being is important, then once again, we have a misalignment, right? So those two things are a great way to gain awareness, right? You're saying, well, my well-being is important for me. All right. Look at your calendar. How much time is there on your calendar for your well-being during the week? And you know, I think the other thing, Dr. Dolapo, is when people think I have people who, you know, will have a prep talk and they'll go from I have no time. They go, oh, OK, every day I'm going to do an hour and a half something. And I'm like, uh, no, that's going to last about three days. And then you're going to go back into the vicious cycle of life. Then you're going to start beating on yourself because you didn't stick to what you said. And then you're just going to give up on it. So no, start with five minutes. Do that consistently. Feel the difference because you know what? This is the great part. Even five minutes will help you make a difference. Once that's consistent, all right, let's go to 10 minutes or 15 minutes. I will tell you my regular go to bed time used to be 2 or 3 a.m. That used to be my regular time. And then I'll get up 6 or 7 a.m. Yeah, that was messed up. And did I go from doing that? to going to bed early, like shortening that by three hours. No, mm -hmm. I slowly started shifting. All right, let's go 20 minutes earlier, 30 minutes earlier. And now I will tell you, if somebody, a friend asked me to go out dancing and I was like, oh, I was like, no, that means I'm not <laughs> going to sleep enough. <laughs> and I was like, oh, 10 years ago, it have been like, let's be go like, out. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh no. I'm like, mama needs her sleep. No, I yeah. can't do that. Your beauty but, sleep is needed. Yes. But you start feeling the difference of mm -hmm. I'm exhausted. Now, can I push through? I can. This is the other thing. We're so taught to push through, to survive versus yeah. thrive. And that's mm. the difference. Mm. Yeah, lovely. Oh my gosh, you all heard her. Our coach Maria is an expert for a reason. And that's why she's on the Living at Your podcast show, Living at Your Finest podcast show. Thank you. There were so many things that you said I want to unpack. I love what you said about strategies and redirects. It's a five minute suddenly starting there. So you all heard her. I hope you're jotting down all these things and you have to reach out to her because she's an amazing coach. Um, so she said, let's start with five minutes. I think anyone can do anything for 
five minutes, really. And I have this number too. I say five minutes when I try to tell people to do some strength training. I say five minutes of five reps, five minutes of five reps. You right. Do it. Yeah. So, but if for any reason they don't have, then I love what you said about strategy, you know, strategies and redirect. And then you said, look at calendar and the bank statement if it's not realigned because we are very good at talking up a hot shot. We can talk oh, yeah. for kingdom come and the action is where the money is, right? So definitely, I, I mean, you've shared a lot of tangible things that people can take into effect. I have on my phone where it says that I should schedule my priority and not mm-hmm. prioritize my schedule. So mm-hmm. if I schedule my priority, then self-care and all the things that you just spoke about, it's there, right? Yeah. Then just focusing on my schedule. Because if I don't put myself on it my I know myself I will be last and I won't do much about it so yeah thank you so much for sharing all of that thank you so much for joining me on this week's episode my goal on this podcast is to empower educate and encourage you to take actionable steps to triumph at living at your finest body mind and spirit of note the information provided here is for educational purposes only and does not substitute as medical advice please discuss your healthcare needs with your licensed medical professional if you are in need of a complete passionate and comprehensive holistic physician or know someone who is, please reach out through my website, livewellness.com for a meet and greet. It'll be my honor to talk to you. Are we connected on social media yet? I share more in-depth content on best practices to ensure that you live at your finest daily. So please join me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, at Living at Your Finest Wellness, where we can learn together and stay connected. Lastly, please subscribe to iTunes if you have not done so already and share the podcast within your circle of influence. An extra step? Leave a review and let me know what topics or discussions you would like to hear more of. Thanks in advance. It is always a thing of joy to hear from you. Now, let's get back to today's episode. Now, so we talked about awareness. You talked about action. How do they, life can get tricky. Life yeah. can get tricky. We all know that, you know, we have different seasons and there's just something about that, that wagon that you get off for some reason, a change in season, and then you're struggling to catch on and that wagon keeps <laughs> pulling and pulling. What do you say to that person? and it was doing so well you know they were like on on it I had a patient just yesterday she was like yeah I was doing so well and now I'm like I can't even get back on so where do they start do they I mean I'm just curious in terms of your expertise how do you tell them you know do they feel shame should they just you know where do they begin is all lost where, where do they go from yeah. there you go back to the five minute rule you start with five minutes and listen one of the worst things that we can do for ourselves which by the way we are all experts with is beating on ourselves right (laughs) oh like how many times you do something great you do that five minutes and you go good job you just did five minutes right but you miss one time five minutes and man you go down that rabbit hole of i suck i never do anything right i know i cannot do this right and you just convince yourself that this is not even worth trying Mm -hmm. so don't dwell on it if you miss your self-care today if you miss your five minutes today acknowledge it right have the awareness and know so how do i change route i change route by taking action so tomorrow when tomorrow comes right you have another a brand new opportunity here is the other thing let's just assume that you scheduled your five times at 9 a.m. and something happened and now the kids forgot something and you gotta go drop it off at school or you know some kind of urgency that came up and you're like I missed my 9 a.m. appointment with myself you know what you can find five minutes maybe in your lunch hour just because you've said 9 a.m. what if it's 9 p.m. what if you can make a couple of circles around your living room so be flexible with it and I think the other big part of it which I would love to get your opinion because I know you promote lifestyle Dr. Dolapo is It's about a lifestyle. It's not about 30 days of eating healthy. It's not about the 30 day boot camp. It's not about, you know, that's why I have a problem with a lot of, you know, approaches to wellness. It's not about the 30 days. I mean, yes, it helps to create the habits. But if you go into that, whatever boot camp with the mindset that this will be a 30 day endeavor, guess what? When the 30 day is over, you're like, I'm done. Now I can go back to eating pizza and burgers, right? And stop going to the gym. Put your lifestyle head and say, you know what? I'm going to find things which bring me happiness, which make me feel good. And I'm going to find those things because I'm going to keep them for life. You know, one of the things I tell my people is fall in love with movement and you don't ever have to work out a day in your life. So if you love to run, 
go running. If you love to dance, go dance. If you love to play golf, go play golf. If you love to, you know, meet with a friend and do a walk, do that. It doesn't have to be what you're told you have to do, right? Just move. You're better off moving than following some special new fat that's out there right now yeah awesome very 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 explicit and very clear so acknowledge pretty much what i picked up from what you said give yourself a pat on the back and and it's true we just are not out we're our own worst critic and we you know and unfortunately that's also back to the mindset Mm -hmm. when we create that kind of environment it's not a productive place to live so certainly you know we want to acknowledge where we are and find a little thought somewhere to get it back, you know, and get it done. And I do agree with you. There's this culture about three days, seven days. And I must I must admit, I am guilty of when I hear a seven day, I jump at it. But I think the whole mindset for me, now that I've learned about lifestyle medicine, which is a medical approach that uses evidence-based lifestyle intervention to keep us well, right? So not just well, but longer. Right. So yeah. I know it's a lifestyle. It's a journey. It's not a sprint. It's a marriage on it's ongoing so that's why those days when I would go on vacation and I'm like I'll gain all the weight and I come back now when I'm exercising on vacation people are like you're still exercising on vacation I'm like am I not still living yes I'm exercising and I call it movement just like you because yeah. movement is you know some people have something with exercise I do enjoy exercising so but I'm okay with the word movement because that's really what it is like now I'm standing because I've sat during the early part of the day so anything that keeps me fidgeting because that that's what we call NEAT NIT, which is the non exercise activity gem- um, thermogenesis. So all these things add up as movement. So I totally agree with you that it's a lifelong thing. We should not look at it like, oh, seven days and then we're done. <laughs> we can go to business right. as usual. I was totally guilty of that and I had to change. And it was something that you said too, that, you know, the goal is still the same to be healthy and well, right? To be to be proactive and not reactive. But the, the way you get there can change. So like if, for instance, you know, that happens to my kids a lot. They like to mess up my schedule where they don't do the things they're supposed to do. And I have to now make their <laughs> emergency my emergency. So I usually tell them your emergency is not my emergency, but for days where they really plead and beg and I'm thrown off mine, yeah. I just need to find the goal is still the same to accomplish this. Where else can I find those bottlenecks to, to get it done? So yes, lots of great nuggets that you shared with us. Thank you so very, very much. And you know, I do want to jump in. You said something very important. Important. You're yeah. intentional to find mm-hmm. that time, yeah. right? You're a physician. You're running a busy practice. You have kids. You're raising a family. Yeah. I know. I have a teenager. I have only one, but I know how it goes, right? Oh, mom, I forgot. And it's like, oh, now who has to deal with that? So unless you're intentional about it, you will not find the time if it's not yeah. a priority. And you know what? Here's the other thing. If it's not a priority for you, don't say it is a priority for you mm-hmm. because that just makes you feel like crap. Because you're misaligned based on what you're saying and what you're doing. Mm. So until you're ready to say, you know what, I'm really ready to take action. Don't just say, like you say, speak the big words. Yeah, (laughs) I like it. I like all your A terminologies. You have awareness, action, acknowledgement, alignment. (laughs) Very good. Well, I love this time we have together. I want, we want to get to know you, Maria, as a person now, if we can switch gears and I'm going to throw up some questions for you about two, three. And then I would we'd like to hear what is new for you, what's new in the in your you know world, and we'd like you to share, you know, how people can get in touch with you. So let me bring up some questions. Are you ready for us? I'm ready. Okay, all right. Well, question: what is the most adventurous thing that you have done in your life? You know, I would say it's probably quitting my corporate job, Ah. (laughs) my corporate career. Mm -hmm. I was at an important stage in my career towards being, you know, moving into the executive ranks and that was a big, it was a big deal decision. Mm. And um, I would say one of the best decisions I have made in my life. Very good. And thank you for doing that because you've helped a lot of people get to where they are now. So we really thank appreciate you. you. So another question, uh, what is one thing people don't know about you? I certainly have learned a lot about you just coming <laughs> on the podcast, but um, something 
except your own immediate family. Is there something that most of your clients don't know about you? You know, I think I sometimes come out very like, let's go very like, almost like rough. And even the way I train, I like my clients are like, you have very high expectations. And I'm like, yep. And they don't always love what I ask them to do, whether it's physical or ask, I ask them a question, which is uncomfortable, right? Where they have to face, I don't know if you allow bad words, but they're on BS. <laughs> and I can come out as like tough. Okay. And, you know, I'll credit one of my sister-in-laws who says, you know, you're an acquired taste, but she's like, we now know that you come from the heart. So uh, I think that's a big one for me because I think when people see me, they see like, ooh. And when people get to know me, like I'm the biggest crier, you put a romantic movie and I need that Kleenex. <laughs> My husband makes fun of me. He's like the toughest woman in the world. She's like, oh, she needs is a romantic chick flick. <laughs> but I have that softer side that, uh, you know, can be there when necessary. And it's a joke in my family because, uh, you know, I have nicknames that are not very nice, but they all know that, you know, I'll tell them what I think and it's going to be from a place of love because I don't beat much around the bushes. I, I tell you the way things are. So uh, I think that's something interesting that people learn about me. Very good. Very good. Well, I have one more question for you. Do you have a favorite? I know you do because I get your newsletters and you always have some affirmation and a favorite quote. So I'm just curious, which one is your go-to when things are, you know, the life is full of ups and downs, the in-between. Which one is the favorite one that you that picks you up when things are a little bit you know, not on the most exciting. I'd accept. You know, I do have to tell you, you're so right. I am a sucker for great quotes. <laughs> and, um, you know, the one that comes to mind right now is you are the solution to your life changing. And that is something that I have to remind myself when I get mm -hmm. into it, the rabbit hole, right? Something doesn't go right. And now your whole world is falling apart is to remind yourself going back to action that you have to take, you have to be aware and you have to take personal responsibility for where your life is. And I'll say life and health, right? So so if your health is not where you want it to be, step up your game. You know, there are a ton of resources of people who are there to support you, such as, you know, the stuff that you do. You do so much to support people in what they do. And there are people around you who love you. Uh, sometimes it is uncomfortable to face our own things, right? The things that we're not doing right, the things that we're not great at. But you know what? Not taking action to change any of that does not serve us. Yeah. So take that personal responsibility. And, you know, one of the things that I love saying is that the rate with which your life will change is directly proportional to the personal responsibility that you take for your life. Mm -hmm. So, and that's just the fact of life. Yeah, that's so true. Very candid. Thank you. Yeah, I'm a soccer for quotes too. Anytime, <laughs> you know, I any, <laughs> I do quotes even before the podcast. I, I share when I do the host of the walk with a dog. So yes, I love it. Thank you so much for just sharing sharing just a little Excellent. bit about you we get to know a little bit more about your beautiful life and and family so yeah we want to hear from you how can our listeners you know get in touch with you how can they learn more about what you're doing we're happy to learn more about what you have in stock you know in the future yeah so we have so much to offer you know i'm very passionate about education and you know using platforms such as this to educate people i think that's the big word educate inspire motivate right? Because I think if it, one person hears something that you say and they take that action and then change their life, it's so worthwhile. So I would say the best place to start is the website, rebelliousstudio.com. And if you go there, you can sign up for our newsletter, which you said that you uh, view every week. And I'll tell you, we have some really exciting stuff coming up in October. We have the Mind Body podcast, which you are also a fantastic guest on. So that is a great resource for education. Again, inspiration, motivation. I do wellness retreats. I do a lot of VIP coaching. I do group online coaching so there are a lot of resources and if you want to get more information rebelliousstudio.com is your best pet i'm on social media i do a lot of lives again same format uh, facebook instagram linkedin venturing into tiktok <laughs> TikTok, okay. <laughs> yes. Awesome. But yes, I would love to connect with you. You know, and I also very much believe, which I know you're a big uh, believer in that because you do host the Walk With A Dog and you do so much, again, for building up a community. I think the power of community is super important, especially if you're changing lifestyle habits. So finding people who are like-minded, connecting with people who are like-minded is so important when you're on that journey because, you know, it's one step forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back. And having a tribe of people who believe support you and when you're not so good at patting yourself on the back they're good at saying go 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 makes a big difference 
Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, um, Coach welcome. Maria. And I love your name, Angel Lover. Thank you so much for being with us on the podcast show. Thanks for just pouring out your heart and just sharing all your expertise. And um, definitely looking forward to future times with you. I do too. Thank you so much, Dr. Dolapo. I appreciate you and everything that you do. Thanks. And to our listeners, thank you all for hanging out with us to the very end. I have been blessed. I've learned so much and I'm sure you have. So today I want to encourage you. You have heard, right? Reach your head. You have absorbed with your heart. Now you got to take the actions with your hands. So one actionable step, even for five minutes, just dance, jump up and down the stairs, whatever it is, just move. That may start with your mind, right? You got to take the action and you have to acknowledge. So definitely I I am pleased that you joined us today. Until next time, I want you to remember that you deserve to be at your finest because you are worth it. Take care and God bless.